Hi everyone and welcome to week two of virtual school. Um, so what you want to do this week is go on to Google Classroom and then click on the classwork page just like last week. At the top you'll see this week's directions video where I come to you from my basement explaining everything for this week. I focus in on um, a difficult topic to explain which is the history of Christianity in Europe and so I've given you a bit of a lecture there with some interesting facts and funny jokes along the way too. So watch that first. Next, you'll find the link for CNN 10 every day. And then there are three assignments for this week. There's the British Isles, Scandinavia, and Western Europe. For each one of these assignments, you will have to take some notes, answer some vocab questions, and some comprehension questions. Um, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm making you the video for the notes for the British Isles. So when you decide to do this assignment, you will see another thing popped up here, which will be a link to this video, which will be me talking through the notes and explaining to you what's going on. As you are listening to the video and taking and following along on your PowerPoint, um, you will see that there are some notes you need to fill in as you go. These look a lot like the notes we take in class, just this time you will be typing your answers into the blank. So you can delete those blank lines and type the right word in. After you finished with all of the slides, there will be some vocabulary. We'll have to go back into the notes and find the meanings of these terms. And there will also be some questions. So please turn these in, um, all three assignments by the end of the week for full credit. Let's get to the notes for today. The British Isles. The vocab words for today are the major countries in the British Isles, the English Channel, constitutional monarchy, industry, economy, and republic. You probably have heard of some of these words before. Industry and economy we talked about during our South America unit with the Amazon rainforest and how Brazil is cutting down those trees to help their economy. So that could be some review. So here we go, the British Isles. Uh, you probably recognize the picture on the top right as being the island of Great Britain and the island of Ireland. And the British Isles are major islands off the coast of Europe and they include the countries of Ireland and the United Kingdom. They are surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, which is over here, the North Sea, and the English Channel in between England and France. The British Isles have a mild climate with lots of rain. The English Channel is this bit of water right here that separates England from France. It's, been, it's one of the most famous geographic features in the world as it has saved England from invasion many times. The Channel is known for having kind of some crazy weather patterns that have helped the English defend themselves against invasions for hundreds of years. In World War II, the United States, the UK, and Canada crossed the English Channel on D-Day, and they won a battle against Germany, who had invaded France. This was a turning point in the war against Germany, so it's famous for that reason, too. The biggest religion of these isles is Christianity. On Ireland, it would be Catholic Christianity, and on the island of Great Britain, it would be Protestant Christianity. I explain the difference between those two types of Christianity in the introduction video, so go ahead and watch that for context there. The UK, part one. The United Kingdom, or the UK, is often called Great Britain. It is one of the most important countries in the entire world. The UK is made up of smaller countries of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. In the bottom, you can see the difference. So England is the main one, Wales, over here, Scotland to the north, and Northern Ireland is this little part up here. Um, the flag of the UK, which is called the Union Jack, symbolizes the union of England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. And you can see how those flags were combined there. The flag of England is the red and white cross. The flag of Scotland is the um, sideways X, it's blue and white. And the flag of Northern Ireland is the red X. And together they make the flag of the UK. For some reason, Wales got left out. The UK is governed by what's called a constitutional monarchy. I'll explain that in the next slide. The capital city is London, and it's the, England is the most important of the four countries that make up the UK together. The UK became a, a major world power after defeating the Spanish Navy in 1588. The UK formed colonies throughout the world after this time, including in North America, especially the 13 colonies that became the United States. Most of these colonies all around the world are now independent. 
1920, you can see that the British Empire uh, had countries that it controlled and colonies all over the world, from Canada to Australia to Africa to India. Um, there are a couple questions in your notes that ask you to look at this map um, and answer some questions, so push pause in your video and do that now. I'm going to keep going ahead, but you can pause and answer those questions. Fun fact, uh, England has invaded almost every single country in the world at some point during their history. The only countries they haven't are the ones in white. So all but 22 countries in the world have not been invaded by England. The government of England is called a constitutional monarchy. And this is a interesting type of government. It's a forum where the power is shared between the monarch or the king or queen and elected rep representatives, which is called parliament. A document called a constitution describes how the power should be shared. The, there are many examples of this all over the world, but the UK is the best and most famous one. The monarch is, at the moment, Queen Elizabeth II. She's been the monarch for a long time, since 1953. And she has what's called symbolic power. She goes to events, she makes speeches, she cuts ribbons, she does all kinds of important things that have symbolic power. Parliament are people that are elected by um, the rest of the population of the UK to make the laws, kind of like our Congress. Um, parliament, people vote for them in elections and they are elected to Parliament. You can see their, their chamber down here. The, once the people in Parliament get together, they pick their leader. So this is called the Prime Minister, kind of like our President. He's in charge of the government. At the moment, a man named Boris Johnson, who is in charge of what's called the Conservative Party, is the Prime Minister. And he's been the Prime Minister since last year. So put them together. The, the monarch has some power to, of symbolic, and the Prime Minister in Parliament had the power to make the laws. Constitutional monarchy. Uh, the next part about the UK. The UK has a strong economy with many different types of industries. Remember, an economy is how much a country makes and sells, and an industry is what people do for work. England is known for agriculture, which is farming, and also trade. It's an island. It uses, it's used ships throughout its history to trade with places all over the world. Scotland's industries include raising sheep, cattle, horses, and producing energy. Coal mining and fishing are important in Wales. Northern Ireland is also a part of the UK and instead of the, the country of Ireland. And this is because of a religious conflict. Northern Ireland, this little yellow country at the bottom, their main religion is Protestant Christianity. The rest of Ireland is Catholic. And those two groups split apart during the 1500s. And many wars were fought between them, but they're at peace now. However, their countries are still separate because of their religion. To learn more about that conflict, you can see my introduction video um, for this unit. The Republic of Ireland. Ireland gained independence from the United Kingdom in 1920. It used to be a part of the UK also, but it eventually got its independence, just like we did from the UK. Its capital is the city of Dublin, which is on the eastern coast of Ireland. It is a republic, which is a different than a constitutional monarchy. So their government, the laws are made by elected representatives only. There is no monarch. So Ireland does not have a king, which is a difference from the UK, where the UK still has their monarch and their parliament. So in this case, there's just a government where laws are made by people. That's what we have in our country. We have a republic in the United States of America. Agriculture is Ireland's leading industry, which is farming. Manufacturing, which is making things, is also important as well. The UK and Ireland, despite being close together geographically, have a troubled history. Many Irish people resent or are angry at the English for colonizing their island for hundreds of years. As mentioned earlier, the divide between the Catholics and the Protestants explains why Northern Ireland is part of the UK and not the Republic of Ireland. Most of us think of St. Patrick's Day when we think of Ireland. And here's why. During the 1800s, many Irish people immigrated to the United States. There was a famine in Ireland, and a lot of people left to try and find a place to live where they could eat every day. St. Patrick's Day in Ireland is a religious holiday that goes back to a saint in the Catholic Church, Patrick, 
who was the first monk to bring Christianity to the island of Ireland. In the United States, though, it's much different. It's more of a celebration of um, Irish culture. So people oftentimes think about leprechauns and dyeing the river green and those kind of things and wearing green not getting pinched. So that's a more of a celebration of Irish culture in America, whereas in Ireland, a celebration of um, their religion. So, last thing for today, go back through your notes and complete the vocabulary chart and answer the, the questions. Remember, turn your work in on Google Classroom to get credit for this week and contact me via email if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.